Thank you for that. Good morning, everybody. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We're going to be singing 265 in the Majesty Hymnal in just a moment. We'll go ahead and ask the Lord to bless first, and then we'll uh, get going with our, our singing before the preaching of the service today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the exciting truth that we can enjoy and celebrate and we can tell others about it that uh, you died on the cross in our place uh, for our sins you were buried in the tomb and you rose again lord as we think about it as we read about it as we uh, celebrate it and, and read it from your word lord i just pray that you would teach us remind us lord help us to to live the way you would want us to live as as uh, your people in your power and again telling others uh, the good news that we serve a, a risen savior please bless this time now we pray in jesus name amen an exciting song and it hits some high notes 
And I, I hope the excitement uh, of the truth, truths in those words help you hit those notes. I hope you weren't just listening to, uh, to me there. But uh, let me ask you to get your verse cards. You should have received your new bulletin and uh, memory verse cards for uh, April. Go ahead and uh, take out your memory verse cards or open your Bible to James chapter 1 and verse 22. We'll do our memory verse right after these announcements. Now, you have to listen up to these announcements. There's a couple of uh, new things in here. Uh, firstly, we'll have our church worship service and junior uh, Sunday school. That's uh, at 11 a.m. Then our church worship service on YouTube is from 8 o'clock. From 8 o'clock on, you can get on the website and uh, get the link to the YouTube channel. Then prayer meeting Wednesdays here at 7 p.m. on site. And kids club and youth group on the Fridays. That's uh, off for the school holidays. And we'll recommence. We'll start again the 23rd of April. Now, church and junior school is at 11 a.m. from this Sunday. And all-age Sunday school is at 10 a.m. And church at 11 a.m. starting on the 23rd of April. Okay, and then let's go over our memory verse. It's, uh, it's shorter than last month's passage. But uh, let's do James 1.22 all together. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James chapter 1, verse 22. One more time. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James chapter 1, verse 22. All right. Amen. Now, we'll go ahead and take a moment to pray at this time for the offerings that uh, have come in. And uh, we do thank you for that, but we'll ask the Lord uh, to bless at this time. Dear Lord, thank you for enabling and providing so that uh, we could give and can give. And Lord, thank you for enabling those who have been giving. And Lord, we pray that you would bless the dispersing of those funds Lord, as we pay bills, as we support missionaries and church planters, uh, those uh, promoting your kingdom and doing your gospel uh, work, Lord, in different parts of the world, we, we pray that uh, this money would be a blessing to them, but we pray also that you would bless their labors and uh, bless their ministries as they seek to uplift you and glorify you as they seek to edify saints, as they seek to win the lost. And Lord, again, we're just so thankful for, for you giving first to us and then uh, enabling us to give. And we're thankful for those who have been giving. We pray that you'd bless them and bless their funds. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, 273 is our next song, and it's another resurrection song. 273 in the Majesty Hymnal, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Amen. Christ the Lord is risen today. That's what we're celebrating. And we're looking forward to the message now from the Word of God. So, Pastor Shelabair, if you'd please come and open up God's Word to us. Thank you. Well, thank you, Pastor Hall. Great singing. I could almost hear it from here. And what wonderful hymns we have to sing regarding uh, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I want to share some thoughts with you uh, this morning about what a great morning that was so many years ago. The greatest morning ever was the morning of Christ's resurrection. Why don't you turn in your Bibles this morning and turn to Luke chapter 24 in Luke chapter 24 and we'll read a few verses from uh, the first uh, verse down to verse 12 in Luke's gospel and uh, it's a great morning and I hope that you have uh, woken up refreshed and uh, are ready to enjoy this Easter resurrection Sunday and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, having you with us and uh, thank you for uh, watching on. So let me uh, read from Luke chapter 24 and uh, we'll begin in the first verse. Now upon the first day of the week, if very early in the morning, they came to the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed, their, bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered under the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things to the eleven and to the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by them, by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at all that was to come to pass. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, this morning is a very special morning in the life of every Christian. Lord God, this morning is that morning in which we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, the importance of that is difficult to explain. And yet, Lord, we, we celebrate and are delighted in this day. And so, Lord, I pray for all those out there watching on and listening in. But Lord God, that you would bless them today. Help them, Lord, to understand the truth of your word, the truth of the risen Christ. And Heavenly Father, bless them. And so, Lord, if there be any amongst them that uh, are not saved, Lord God, if there be any who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Saviour, who do not believe that he did die and was buried and on the third day rose again to pay the penalty for their sins, Lord God, I pray today will be the day of their salvation that they by faith and by the grace you offer them might truly be saved. And so, Lord, we pray your blessing today and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Bibles speak of uh, many mornings. and We're told that our Saviour prayed early in the morning. In the Old Testament, uh, it's said that Joshua is a man who rose early in the morning. Think about that morning that's spoken of in Genesis chapter 22 when Abraham got up early in the morning and took Isaac, his only son, up to uh, Mount Moriah to offer him 
as a sacrifice. And what a morning it was for Jacob after he battled with the angel of the Lord all night and then in the morning uh, with a, a little crippled uh, leg to some extent set up a pillar of stones in honour of God there at Bethel. And what an amazing morning it must have been for Daniel. That morning after which he had, had prayed and uh, been taken uh, to the lion's den and spent the night there in the lion's den. And in the morning, as the sun came up over the city of Babylon, he and the lions alone together, and there he was. What a morning that must have been. And what a morning it would have been for the disciples. For that time after a great storm came in Galilee and they rode and battled through the night and then in the morning they arrived on the shore safe and sound as Christ got them there. What a morning that would have been to see the sun rising up over the Sea of Galilee and to be safe and sound. Oh, they were great mornings. But none of those can compare with the morning that Christ arose from the grave. Amen. Oh, what a morning that was. Mm. On that great morning, our Lord Jesus Christ conquered death. He conquered hell and the grave forever. And there's never been a morning like that before and there'll never be a morning like that again. It was when Jesus rose and gave eternal life to all those who would place their faith in him. Oh, what a morning that was. And just so that you are sure uh, that Luke, when he wrote the Gospel uh, of Luke here, uh, was quite confident and, and knew what he was saying, let me just read you a few verses from the opening words of Luke's Gospel in the first uh, chapter in chapter 1 and in the first few verses we read this for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto you in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Wow. Luke says, I know what happened and I want to put this down on paper so that you can be sure of it in the future that thou mightest know the certainty of those things. That is just very important, that we might know the certainty of the resurrection of Jesus Christ on that wonderful morning so long ago. On that morning, there were time for, or there was time for solemn reflections. As the morning began to dawn on that first day of the week after Jesus Christ had died on the cross, some women came to the grave, to the tomb, uh, to finish the anointing of the Lord's body that had been begun by uh, Nicodemus and by uh, Joseph of Arimathea. And while these women were heading toward the tomb, the disciples were there in the upper room, fearful that the same kind of treatment that had been meted out to their Saviour, had been meted out to Jesus Christ, might be meted out to them. And so they were hidden away. These women were sad and the disciples were scared that morning. And just as Jesus had said, the shepherd had been smitten and the sheep had been scattered. Why were they so upset? They believed Jesus to be the Messiah, even though he had told them of the cross and of the resurrection 
They never really understood that message. They never grasped the meaning of Christ's words. They expected that he would set up his kingdom by throwing off the Roman yoke of occupation and bondage. But now he was dead. The one they had placed all their faith in, their hopes in, was gone. This man had changed their lives by his power, by his demonstration of his godly connection, by his evidenced love for them. And yet he had died a humiliating and violent death on a cross. It appeared to be a very sad day. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 12 on for a few verses there, uh, Paul tells us that if Jesus were dead this morning, then we all have a reason to grieve. He said, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ not be raised, your faith is in vain and you are yet in your sin. If Jesus is dead, if Jesus is still dead and never rose from the grave, then we all have a great and terrible problem. Sin has the victory and we have no alternative but to find ourselves in hell at the end of this life here on earth. There would be no hope beyond this life. And even in this life, Paul says, we'd be miserable. But Jesus isn't dead because of this morning, this amazing morning. And so it was a morning of solemn reflections, but it was also a morning of startling revelations. In the sadness of that morning, God the Father took great pains to minister to the needs of their hearts. Aren't you glad? So glad that the Lord cares when you're hurting. The Lord has a way for you, a place for you, when you feel nobody else can help. He can. God moved to encourage the hearts of those saddened believers on this morning as he moves to encourage us even today. On that morning, He rolled the stone away from the tomb, not to let Jesus escape, but to allow us the opportunity to look in and see what was happening. He sent an angelic messenger with the good news that Jesus was alive. We read that in verse four. Never has the world heard a message like that. It still reverberates through the halls of history, through the pages of time today. And he had a word of encouragement for Peter. Peter, who had not so long ago denied him thrice. And he said, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you to Galilee. Can you imagine how Peter felt when Peter heard that message? He said to tell you, especially Peter, I'm going to Galilee, meet me there. Wow. He met Mary Magdalene, who'd been forgiven so much just outside of the tomb there. And he left a message for his followers inside the tomb. His clothes were there, but he was not. And there, uh, John says, the napkin was neatly folded next to the clothes. Now, I'm not quite sure if I can prove this, uh, but uh, it is a strong suggestion of a Jewish custom. That when a man who has servants was eating a meal, He would use his napkin to uh, signal to them during the course of the meal. Now, if he was to wipe his face, 
and uh, go his hands and whatever and then uh, take the napkin and scrunch it up and throw it down on the table, it meant that he was finished. Oh, I've finished eating, I'm going away, I'm not coming back. You can clean up the table. But if he took that napkin, having wiped his hands and his mouth, his beard, whatever, and folded it neatly and placed it on the table, it was an indication to his servants, I'm going away just for a little bit and I will be back, so don't clean the table up yet. So I wonder, was Jesus telling his disciples, I'm not here now but I'll be back. He revealed himself also after that to other disciples as they travelled on the road to Emmaus. And if you read that story, it's towards the end of Luke's gospel in uh, chapter 24. There were many other things that took place on that resurrection morning that marked it as a great and glorious day. And for us, here we are some 2,000 years removed from that morning the message hasn't changed at all. It's still the same wonderful message. We still need to hear the good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. He's alive today and there is therefore hope for tomorrow for you and I. If you're trapped in sin and see no avenue of escape, you need to know that Jesus has made a way to set you free. Amen. You need to know that if you come to Jesus for salvation or for help in any matter, he's there. He will hear you and he will help you. He's here to save you from the penalty of your sin, to give you eternal life, to give you hope in this life and help through this life. Everybody needs to know Jesus is alive today. You know that wonderful hymn uh, that's in our hymn book says this, I serve a risen saviour. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever man may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. It was a wonderful morning. It was a morning of solemn reflections. It was a morning of startling revelations. And it was more than that. It was uh, also a morning of stunning realisations. While the disciples were there in the upper room hiding out of fear for their lives, something miraculous happened in their presence. Jesus the one who had died three days before was standing in their midst and they were terrified and they thought they'd seen a ghost. However, Jesus had some news to tell. He showed them the nail holes in his hands and in his feet to prove that it really was him. He offered to let them touch him and then he sat down with them to eat a meal. Most of the disciples hadn't believed in his resurrection until that point in time. Now they were convinced Jesus is alive. If you have a look in verse 41 of Luke chapter 24, it says this, and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, have you any meat? Of course, that's when he shared a meal with them. That tells us something. 
it means that they thought it was just too good to be true. You know, they were so amazed. How can it be? They struggled to believe. This is what needs to happen in the lives of many people. Although they struggle to believe, they need to believe. Amen. They need to realise that Jesus Christ is more than a baby in a manger or some poor fellow who got himself crucified. is more than a story in an old book. People need to understand that Jesus is alive today. He's real and he's the only hope that people have if they seek to miss hell and get to heaven. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by man. We need to grasp the truth this morning that it, it wasn't some bunny rabbit carrying a chocolate egg basket that died for you and me and then rose from the dead. Nothing to do with it at all. This day is about Jesus. It's about the fact that he died for our sins while we were yet sinners. The Bible says Christ died for us. It's about the fact that he was buried and three days later he rose from the tomb and forever made a way for you and I to have eternal life by our trusting him as our personal saviour. Is Jesus just a story on the pages of a book or is he real in your heart? this morning you see just knowing about Jesus and what he did won't save your soul there are plenty of people who know there ought to be more but there are quite a few who know we need to do a little bit more than just know we need to believe we need to trust him and he will save your soul from the penalty of sin he rose from the tomb forever making a way for us to have eternal life. Who is Jesus to you? It's a question that must be faced by everybody. Jesus asked his disciples that question. Whom say ye that I am? And the apostle Peter speaking for the others and boldly said this, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. You can read it there. But what do you think? What do you believe? Is he the risen Son of God to you? There's another question uh, that was asked one time. Pontius Pilate asked, it's recorded in Matthew 27 and verse 22. He said, what shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? What's your answer? What will you do with Jesus? The one who rose from the dead, the one who's resurrection we celebrate this morning this wonderful morning it was a morning of solemn reflections a morning of startling revelations a morning of stunning realizations but it was also a morning of spiritual repercussions as they sat and ate that first resurrection morning Jesus began to tell his disciples that God's plan was to save the world they had been called by the father to be witnesses and that they were to go and spread the news of that great spiritual truth that great spiritual victory that had been won when Jesus rose from the grave when Jesus rose from the dead old enemies that had plagued men since sin first entered into the world, that time when Adam and Eve uh, disobeyed God. These things were forever defeated. 
Think about this. Death. Imagine the struggle that ensued early that morning as death had to let go of Jesus Christ. No more would death be able to claim the victory and sting the human race with its curse. For the child of God, death is merely a doorway out of this world into heaven, where every splendour, every glory of God will be seen, where every tear shall be wiped away and the saints of God will live forever, live forever in the presence of their Saviour. That was achieved this wonderful morning. And how about hell? When Jesus entered death, uh, entered death for mankind, he destroyed, uh, he descended rather, uh, into a place called hell. He went to the paradise part of that, that land of the dead. And this was the same place that the thief on the cross went to. The thief on the cross who was there and died alongside of Jesus Christ had admitted a faith in Christ. And Jesus had said to him, Today thou shalt be in paradise with me. Now all those who believe in Jesus Christ go directly to heaven when they leave this world. And the grave, the grave, another one of those things we dare not think about very much. Another enemy that died that day was the grave. Mankind has always lived in fear of that moment when they die. And so often we hang on for every last breath, fearing the grave. However, that grave is simply a hole in the ground that becomes the receptacle of our one-time earthly body, this worn-out body, until the day of the resurrection. When we lay this flesh down in death, our spirits ascend to their Father in heaven. And the next time we see in our bodies, they'll be glorified, wonderful, and they'll be like Jesus' body. The Bible tells us that. And how about sin? Sin is an enemy of all of us. We battle against sin all our life. Now, in truth, uh, sin was taken care of a few days earlier when Christ died on the cross and shed his precious blood as the penalty for sin. But I think the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ was, was our Heavenly Father kind of saying, Amen. Hmm. We need a risen Saviour to save us. One who's alive can save all who come to him by faith. In the Bible in Hebrews chapter 7, and in verse 25 we read this, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Big promise, isn't it? A big promise of great things for everybody who will believe. Folks, sin doesn't have to defeat you. Jesus won the victory over sin on the cross and rose from the dead. You can be free from the power of sin by trusting Jesus Christ. And perhaps one more we could speak about this morning. Satan. That enemy took a bit of a beating that day. Satan, the devil, the accuser of the brethren, that old serpent, whatever name you choose to give him, the outcome is the same. He's the enemy of God, he always has been. And the people of God, he's their enemy too. He tried every way to short circuit Christ's plan of redemption. He tried so many times and yet Jesus weathered the storm. 
He tried to kill Jesus as a baby in Bethlehem. He tried to defeat him early in his ministry. He wanted Jesus to disobey the Heavenly Father. And there again in the Garden of Gethsemane, Satan tempted Jesus not to go ahead. But Jesus said to his Heavenly Father, I don't want to do this, but not my will, thy will. And so Jesus remained faithful and true to his heavenly Father and to the purpose that God had ordained since the beginning of time, that he should be the one to sacrifice his life, to shed his precious blood for the penalty of sin, and the third day be raised, evidencing his power over sin and death. When Jesus cried, it's finished, as John recorded in John chapter 19, verse 30, Satan heard the foundations of his kingdom begin to crumble. And he knew judgment was coming for him. Every plan, every scheme had been put aside. He saw his power broken and himself judge. He is a defeated enemy in Christ. Because Jesus lives, you and I can be saved by the grace of God. And we can have our sins washed away forever. We can go to heaven when we leave this world. There is hope, there is help, and there is an eternity with Jesus Christ awaiting those who believe. I wonder this morning, have you understood? Have you understood that Jesus is alive? and that Jesus is who you need. Do you know what will happen to you if you were to die without him? Do you realise that there's no other way to heaven than through the Lord Jesus Christ? Did you know that Jesus loves you? Did you know that his death was for you? Perhaps you do. I hope you do. But if you don't, if you don't know that, repent today. Seek Jesus Christ, the one who proved his power over death by by being raised from the grave on that third day. Did you know this morning, this glorious morning, when we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your saviour this could be a glorious morning for you Amen. you could trust Jesus Christ find the penalty of your sin paid forever and you too could have a place in heaven and how does that happen because so many years ago a glorious Sunday morning Jesus won the battle over death and hell and sin and raised from the grave. What a glorious morning. What a wonderful morning it was. Oh, what a morning it was when Jesus rose from the grave just for you. Let's pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning. Thank you for the remembering of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you bring to mind that we have, even in our world, been able to set aside for this day that we call Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Lord God, help us to know it, to trust in Jesus Christ, and to know that he is risen from the grave. Last of all, if you could come and lead us in a closing hymn this morning, that would be great. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Pastor Shalabert. Wasn't that good? Uh, Resurrection Sunday, the resurrection morning. What a day that was. 
Amen. All right, let's go to 246. It's Calvary covers it all. Uh, that uh, the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you hear it all the time from this pulpit. Uh, that's what it was all about, and uh, that's what Easter was about, and Calvary covered it all. And what, what did you say? And the resurrection was like God saying, Amen. I like that. Let's sing uh, the, the words on your screen or 246 in the Majesty Hymnal. Jesus did about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Uh, I hope you've uh, trusted in that for your salvation. If, if you haven't done so, why not do that today? Uh, what a great day. Any day is a great day to be saved. But how about just after hearing uh, about his resurrection from the grave, his conquering of sin and death and hell? Uh, what a great uh, reminder. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Dear Lord, thank you for your atoning work on the cross, dying in our place for our sins. You who were perfectly uh, innocent and uh, had a, a wondrous relationship with God the Father and, and God the Holy Spirit throughout eternity past, you came and bore our sins uh, on the cross that we might be saved. And Lord, then after three days, you rose again. Uh, how glorious uh, it must have been to see, how glorious it is to know. Lord, we pray that, uh, that we would be thankful to you, that we would be rejoicing in you, and Lord, that we would conduct our lives uh, in the manner that we should uh, as uh, believers uh, uh, in a resurrected Lord. Thank you for the reminders today. Thank you for what you've done for us. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.